Lando Norris, welcome back to the Fast and the Curious. Thank it's you very much. lovely to see you. It's lovely, but it's not a lovely day, is it? Well, well the well, sun is just. Uh, I think he might have just stopped. But in the background, we can hear we can hear Oscar Piastri zipping around the track, and the sun has just. There we go, and the sun has just come out. <laughs> has it? It's come, it's just, come out, just. It's come out for Oscar, apparently. Yeah, not to, for me, though. We're next to your truck. But it's a beautiful day because uh, my first day back in the car. How was your winter break? What did you do? What have you been up to? Oh, I've done many things. It'll take a while to cover everything. I travelled a fair bit. Yeah. Um, I went to see Daniel out in Perth. Did you? Yeah, yeah, That's down nice. in Perth. Uh, it was a bit of a spontaneous move. Um... Not romantic anyway, but just I'm just saying, like, <laughs> it wasn't planned. Hey, it's Valentine's and Day. And all of a sudden, this. no, I'm, no my, my car's my only love. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and my mom, and my sisters, and my brother, and my dad. Um, but uh, yeah, I went down to the Perth, which was cool, and it was very warm, like 40 degrees, so it was oh. beautiful. I went from 40 degrees in Perth, uh, minus 30 degrees in Finland. Wow. So I had a 70 degree hit, which was quite a shock for the body. Wow. Um, but, uh, How do you pack for 70 that? degrees. So I had, I had all my warm stuff with me, like right. jacket and stuff. So I'm in Perth with like winter jacket on, hoodies oh, on, nice. beanie on. And Daniel rocked up like tanked off in Did you have to go out and pick up some clothes? So I want clothes? Yeah, did you have to go out and pick some up if you... No, I just took them off. <laughs> nice. Can I ask a question about what a day with Daniel Ricciardo's like in... Perth. What's, the, uh -huh. what's, the, what's, his, what's, his, what's his plans for you on a day day trip? Uh, so we woke up. Um, always good to start that way. Uh, <laughs> we we attempted at making breakfast. Mm -hmm. That was probably the highlight of the day. Yeah. You was and trying to make breakfast. poached eggs. Oh, they are. Hard. Or some sort of eggs. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that didn't go down very well. And even they looked so bad. Some didn't even want to eat the eggs because they just looked bad. Mm. But um, I thought I cooked them very well. And actually, they left me to do most of the cooking because I felt like I was the responsible one there for in the kitchen. And, um, and um, it was delicious, actually. One of my break best breakfasts I've ever made uh, for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Long way to go for an egg. I wonder if anything else happened on this trip. <laughs> no, that was about it. It was Just the highlight eggs. of the day. But then it was um, <laughs> a bit of a swim, a bit of gym, uh, a bit of training by then. And... Um, He's got, yeah, some little cool things, a little motocross bike, and I probably shouldn't say that because I don't think I was allowed to do it, but um, a little bit of motocross and... Nice. Yeah. I we saw you had helmet anything. and you had your arm pads on and all sorts. Oh, definitely. Of, definitely wasn't just helmet, like nothing else. <laughs> Tank top. Yeah. 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 No, but it was, it was a lot of fun, so I enjoyed it. I suppose, Lando, this is the first time you've been back at Silverstone since the British Grand Prix. It is. Obviously, wildly different climate. Yes. But... <laughs> We haven't. I've not, I've not. I've not spoken to you since that day where you were, you had a fantastic. It was. That was a turnaround race. time, wasn't it? How do you feel when you come back to Silverstone? What does it? What does it make you um, feel? I mean, now it feels a little bit more empty. Just a little. <laughs> yeah. just, a, little just, a little bleaker. But, just, yeah. but uh, just great memories. Like I don't know where else in the world you get such a thing. People cheering for you and shouting your name, and um, that's that's always the highlight. That's the one thing I look forward to the most every year. And when you took the lead into turn one. Oh. The oh. roar yeah. and your team in the background have all just gone. Oh, but yeah. honestly, that was what I, you know, seen some brilliant races at the British yeah. Grand Prix as a fan like you. That was one of my all-time favourite F1 moments. That was fantastic. Cool. I didn't hear it. Um, we were, you were in, busy we, at the time. We were in I the garage. We, 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 we were in the garage. We were there. The garage. So maybe you sh did you leave like after three laps? Is that when I lost the lead? <laughs> you know what? Yeah. I think you left just after that. Like, it's peaked. Like, we were off to the other team. <laughs> we, we, your, we your lucky charm. Okay, well, they need to come back, I guess. Well, we'll again. come to every race. Thanks for the that also, that, that would help. Yeah. You've seen the footage of, of everyone shouting in the Yeah, so that's right? when everyone said it. Because if anyone tells you that they hear stuff when they're in the car, bullshit. <laughs> um, <laughs> they're lying to you, all right? Then don't, do not trust them. But um, I rewatched uh, just some of these clips. I don't normally rewatch the whole races, but I, I rewatched some of the clips. And when you can hear the fans and the commentators and stuff, and uh, it's really incredible. Because you just, I know it's just, I dreamt of that. And I remember being a kid Ooh. watching Silverstone, don't awe me. And uh, <laughs> if that was a nice, don't awe me. <laughs> uh, I dreamt of that. I remember being, you... like, being the kid watching it and like shouting for Lewis or whoever it was. And, uh, and that was me. And it's just, um, it's just a pretty cool thing to, to imagine. Is this the first time where you've sort of taken stock about that and like just sat there and really thought about it? No, about no, I, I think of it quite a bit. <laughs> um, not not just that moment. I'm just saying, like, as a reality check of, um, I know, like, how lucky I am to be in that situation, to be, you know, wearing these colours and 
be a Formula One driver in the first, there's 20 spots in the world. Like just 20, you know, it's not like football where there's freaking 100 different teams and Anyone can play. There's, there's 20, 20 in the, in the squad, world. Yeah. And um, for me to be one of them, for me to have been in that position as a kid and got all the way and now to be here, um, not many people in the world get that, get, get that opportunity. So kind of bring myself back to the reality of I was once a kid, just like many other kids now, dreaming of that position. Um, I think of that quite a bit. And also, what a season. We spoke this time last year, sort of give or take a couple of weeks. Yeah. And I remember asking you what the aim for the season was. And you said the aim is to get the car into a good enough place where we can battle for podiums in 2024. Yeah. And what happened, you got to Bahrain and the car obviously wasn't in a great place. Uh -huh. But then by middle of the season, you're taking the lead into turn one. Yeah. That is a season of ups <laughs> and downs. That's a mad it was, season. It was... I mean, Silverstone was the turnaround point for us. We brought the upgrade to Austria with a couple smaller things for, for here in Silverstone. But that was the point where everything turned upside down. And uh, until Austria, I think we scored 17 points or something wow. between two drivers. And then after that was 290, I think, something like that. So there was a fairly big difference big of, um, spike, of podiums, points, and, and excitement. Uh, but Silverstone was really where it all turned around. We scored the first podium here. And... Uh, yeah, that was a very special moment for, for myself, you know, to, to take the lead at Silverstone in front of my home crowd. Like, I was imagining just being on the side, like cheering and, and <laughs> what everyone else would be like. Um, so I imagined it even when I was driving and I had to have like a little look at the crowd and yes. seeing everyone standing up. So I did what I could to take in that moment. Um, but it was, it was a very tough start. We didn't end up, we didn't expect to end up as good as we did. And I think that was a promising sign mm. because we knew in such a short time, if we could do that much, what could we do through the winter, through 24, through 25 even? So uh, I'm looking forward to it. So you say you were surprised about that. Yeah. Oscar must have been as well. So you must yeah. have chatted to each other and gone, oh my God, this is, this is going quite well. Quite, quite literally, yeah. We have our moments of the opposite. Like, it's pretty bad today, wasn't it? It's <laughs> 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 pretty shocking, right? And then we have the moments of like, no, we're actually quite quick, aren't we? Like, even okay. sometimes we go into a race weekend and we're like, yeah, we're not going to be good here. And then we're, I don't know where in practice, but we're like, oh, it actually feels, feels pretty decent, doesn't it? And then I might, you know, Japan or something, and we turn out to be on, a, on the podium, so... Um, that must be such a good feeling when you when you yes. get in practice and you're like, oh, actually, this feels Especially when good. you've not really done a good lap. You're like, that was bad. Still P2. <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, it's actually looking quite good. So you do have those, those moments. We talked about this on the podcast, actually. Remind me where it was where... Uh, you had a, a word with yourself. We were like, on the podcast... Every we weekend, I no, think. No, but we were like, don't be so down on yourself, Lando. You, you were just, where was it? We, had the, we did an I episode. I can't remember the one in particular, but yeah, the, the, I think it was after a qualifying where you'd made a mistake. Yeah. And we, we did a podcast after and we were all sort of like Team Lando being like, oh, don't be hard on yourself. Yeah. It sometimes feels like you F1 drivers, and I know it's not just you, you're harsh critics on yourself. You guys yeah. aren't afraid to say, come on, I've got to do better. That's a nice way of putting it, yeah. But uh, I wonder if that, is, is that you telling yourself, what, what is that? Is that a comfort thing? I think, like, no, really it's not at all a comfort. Um, it's rare that I like comfort, like comforting in any way. Um, I think it's just, you set your own targets as a driver and as an athlete. Um, you know what you're capable of doing and not capable of doing and so forth. So you've got to set the bar high, you know, you're against 20 of the other, well, 19 of the best drivers in the world. Mm. So it's no point ever being complacent or happy with being second, third, fourth, whatever, when you should be first or whatever way around it is. Um, and there was just a few times last year when I should have been first or second or third and I was sixth or seventh or fifth, whatever. <laughs> and there's no reason for me to be happy about it because I'm like, you know, if I just didn't make this mistake for whatever reason, I should be there. And then maybe that transferred to another podium or more points tomorrow. So it's just... Uh, it's just high, st like high standards mm. is pretty much the main thing and, and not being happy with the job I've done if I've made a mistake. And uh, I think that's just me. I think I'm very hard on myself, but at yeah. the same time, it's made me who I am. I think it's definitely made me a better driver in the long run. And uh, it's just how I work best with trying to improve and become a, a better driver. It's yeah. that like mentality, isn't it? To just keep getting better and to try and be the best. I mean, it's... You're against drivers who've done it for years, world champions and all these guys. Like, as soon as you think, oh, I'm, I'm all right now, <laughs> that's not only when they're probably behind their computer thinking, oh, I can do this better, I can do this better, you know? So it's the same with the car. As soon as you think, oh, we're finally there, every other one, everyone else is going to be working hard to try and find more. So I think it's just a sport where it never stops and you just have to 
every day keep going, okay, what's the next thing I've got to improve? What's like, where can I do better myself? Where can we do better as a team? And where, where can we make the car quicker? So it's a never ending cycle of, uh, of improvement. And I guess it must be comforting. You, you like it at McLaren. You've been yeah. here for such a long time. Yeah. You get on so well with that. You get on so well with Oscar. In terms of a racing driver's mentality, I guess that must be comforting because it's, you know, tempting, I guess, to roll the dice and go, all right, I'm going to go somewhere else. But yep. I'm guessing as a racing driver, that's a risk to potentially put yourself in an environment where you're yes. not as comfortable. Yeah, it's always, uh, it's always a risk. Going to work with people you've never worked with before, meet new faces, like uh, you're never going to be as comfortable doing that as you are with a team that you've been with for five, six, seven years because there's a level of honesty and trust. You can be honest with one another and go, you know, I need, need more support here. I don't think you're doing a good enough job there. And, and you, you work together in a much better way and it's a much more efficient way of working than if you're new to someone. You know, you're always a little bit afraid to know what the limitations of, of each other are. So, um, yeah, it's, I do love it here. I have loved it. Um, I'm going to continue to love it for many more years. And um, that's also just why, you know, because I love it and I'm very happy. So there's those two things. Is uh, I want to be a world champion. I want to win races and that's the priority of it all. But there's also the, I'm still just a normal guy and I do racing because I love it, not because I have to do it. And uh, at the same time, I just want to have fun and enjoy every minute. And if that's spending it with McLaren over another team, then um, that's what I choose to do. Yeah. Just before we let you go, uh, this sounds a cliche question. I don't mean it to be because we talk to F1 drivers a lot of the time about fans. Yep. But it so often strikes me that there is such a love for you from your fans. You see it online so much. We see it in our DMs on this podcast for your appearances. Like, uh -huh. my goodness, people love Lando Norris. Oh, my God. My, my niece me. called me today and went, please say hi to Lando. Oh. They go, we've done it. Say, say, oh. say hi to Pia. Hi, Pia. Where are you? Hello, hello. <laughs> that must... It is. It's what's incredible. What's that like to have that love from these people you've never met, to cheer you on in the stands? That must be so special. It is because it's, it's, it's something that's hard to describe in the first place. Just the feeling you get of love and support from people. Um, there's not many ways around the world, like many things you can do in the world where you get the same feeling and the same satisfaction. Um, and it's just the fact that like people travel from all over the world and they come and support me. I still find it just odd in a way that yeah. like people coming over to cheer me on and want me to win and all of those things. It's an odd thought to have because it's just, I think not normal for, for hmm. people. Um, so I think of that quite a bit. Like, why is this person even coming to cheer me on? You're like, <laughs> I do think of it, but at the same time, I'm I'm very thankful because I know I have probably one of the best followings and, and just mm. fan bases in, in general, very supportive always. And, uh, you know, already in the hotel last night, there was quite a few of them. So it's always nice. And especially when it's um, kids, you know, because when you like that story earlier of when out, that was once me mm. and... There was an F1 driver and I was like, oh my God, this is mm. so awesome. Uh, it's that same thought of like, I, I picture that being myself, you know, and thinking oh, like I'm that person now and I can give something back to, to them and try and inspire them in some way. So I'm, I'm thankful. It's probably one of the most special things about all of it. I get to travel the world and drive nice cars and mm -hmm. it's glorious um, and tough at times. But at the same time, like that's pretty the most rewarding, special part of it all is the 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 support and the love you get from people. Oh, so nice. We've argued twice now. Oh, you said don't yeah, ask, but it's nice. You don't need it's, and it's lovely to see you're still enjoying it because in such a pressure cooker, it's so easy for professional yeah. sports people not to. It's lovely to see that glint in your eye, the enjoyment. I remember speaking to you before your first race uh -huh. and you looked so Damn, 2019, excited. yeah. And that, but that hasn't changed. And that's I was probably like down here right then as well. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> me too. I've always been down there though. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, times change and you get more confidence and you get all those things. But it, honestly, there are times you don't enjoy it and I don't enjoy it because they're just, there's the tough parts and there's moments where you're like, damn, I just, do I have what it takes? And that was probably more in the past. Um, but more often than not, you'd like, you just quickly swing back to the, I'm one of 20 in the world and I get mm. to travel the world and just, it's not a nine to five job and all those things. <laughs> and yeah, that's like, then I think, I'm so happy, really, aren't I? I'm like, I you just, it's relative, but at the same time, all, all in perspective, I live a great life and I'm always thankful for that. And I know the business I'm in is, is, a, is a very good one. 
You do seem really happy, like genuinely. Does, does That's it? That's good, isn't it? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I try to be. I try. <laughs> Living his best life, Lando. I thank am. You I try so to. Much for coming no on the podcast. Always a pleasure. Good and luck. I, well, our listeners love you, as we just said. They really do. We have got so many. And I love them. your listeners. Well, that's good, oh. Lando. Thank you for coming back on the fast. No worries. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Yes, a year ago. A year ago, we started this podcast, and you were one of Damn. our first drivers. So, happy anniversary yeah. to you! Thank you very much. Happy anniversary uh, to me. We'd like to sign you <laughs> to up for you another year. If that's all right. I'm down. Nice. Yes. It's, it's, I'll charge. Got charge. It, I'll charge it. more next time. It's <laughs> right. It's fine. Do. He's renewing uh, again. Thank you, guys. Bye.